Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be taking you further through the beginners course on sculpting. This time we're looking at the sculpting toolbar or the brush settings. So in the previous episode I went through the brushes and I'll put a card in the corner linking to that now and a link in the description. Also remember you can go to my website for more information and free courses. So today I'm going to start off by going file, new and going straight to the sculpting. That will give us a nice subdivided cube which you can see there if I go into wireframe mode, back into solid mode. I'm going to expand out my brushes so you can see the names and I'm going to turn on my shortcut keys so you'll see them down in the bottom corner here. So let's start with the draw brush. If I go over to my side here, I get the active tools. So I've got my brush here and I've got all my tool settings. The first thing I'm going to go through before anything else is the Dyne Topo. So I'll tick on Dyne Topo and I'll open the disclosure. And I talked a bit last time about detailing the difference between relative detail and constant detail. This time I'm going to use relative detail to show you the real differences. One thing to point out though is that constant detail, if you put the resolution up, it gives you more detail. So in this case it's actually slightly less than we've got. But if I put this up to something like 50, you can see a nice lot of detail. Now with relative detail, which is detail dependent on how close I am or far away, you put this down for more detail. So if I go down to something like three from about this sort of distance, you can see that's roughly what we've got on our ball. But if I move in with the wheel on my mouse and draw, you can see we've got more detail now. If I go to wireframe to highlight that, you can see there's more detail in this area. If I zoom in further, even more detail. But as I move out and draw, it scrubs over that detail. So I go out further, scrubs over the detail, and you can see it getting less and less detailed. So it actually, what's known as, collapses the topology. So the further out you go, the less detail you'll get, and it will delete the detail that you had there. In order to keep that detail, so if I zoom in and do some detail now, around here, I can change this to subdivide edges. Now I'm doing some detail, it's the same detail, but when I move out, it doesn't destroy that detail. Can you see, if I move right out to here, we've still got that detail level underneath. So I zoom back in, and you can still see it just there back to solid mode and you can see that fine detail in here and even if I zoom out and draw the fine detail still stays yet my brush is not on a high detail setting okay I'll undo all those and now I'm going to stick on about four with subdivide collapse for now so it doesn't create too much intricate detail and I would say generally speaking stick to constant detail to start with then when you want to do really fine details if you do then you can go to something like relative detail with subdivide edges so when you move right in with your mouse, you'll be creating really fine details still. But be careful, because you can see that detail level there is actually on the other side of my mesh. <laughs> if we zoom in a bit further, that detail level there is very fine, and it will increase your topology. I actually went through my mesh there and started drawing on the other side. But you can go very close in and do some really fine details with this, but you'll hardly notice them as you zoom out and is it really worth that for the increase in polygons which will make your computer lag depending on the spec of your computer okay so let's undo those two and we're back to the beginning so I'll put my detail size at three so I know exactly where I am and start going through the other tools so first of all the radius is fairly obvious and the strength is fairly obvious the shortcuts for these are F for the size or radius and shift F for the strength now the direction, again, fairly obvious. At the moment, if I paint, it pulls out the topology. If I press subtract, it pushes in. Let's go back to add, which is the default for this brush. And I draw, and I can also press control to do the opposite and push in. Now it may be the case that you want to change this round. So for the crease brush, for example, if I do a crease in here, the default for the crease is subtract. And some people don't like this, they prefer it to react in the same way as their other brushes. So if I change that to add, when I press control now, it will dig in. And when I draw, it will push out or pinch out. So you are able to change these around. And I think crease is the only brush that does the reverse. So you may want to change it for the crease brush. Let's go back to the draw brush and I'll just smooth some of this out. I hold shift down for the smooth brush and I can smooth things out. Now topology rake is an interesting one. Don't worry too much if you don't understand it, but I'll quickly go through what it does. If I brush now with topology rake not on, you can actually see roughly my topology here. If I go to wireframe as well, it's sort of fairly even. 
Now topology rake, if I turn this up, tries as best it can to sort of follow a line with the topology. You can see that it's going quite bumpy, but if we take a look at the topology, it tries to follow the brush stroke. And that can be very useful when you want to go over to something like crease and start creasing this. If I crease this edge here and I crease this edge here, this one is doing a better job at the creasing because it's following the line of the topology. But you sacrifice that sort of smoothness. But if I smooth this out now, you can see it's created a better job for hard surface modeling. So rake acts a bit like you're holding a rake and pulling the topology along the line of your brush stroke. So it's quite a clever tool and it's a fairly recent, so well done to the team. I'll turn that down and I'll go back to the draw brush. Do remember that it creates bumpy topology, so that's what it's like with it turned off, turned on, it's quite bumpy. So just be aware of that and that's why you don't have it turned on all the time. Let's look a bit at auto smooth. So this is what it's like without auto smooth on. Let's turn auto smooth up, move across a bit, and this is what it's like on. We're not noticing so much with this brush. I'll turn my detail up just a touch to 1.5, so all the way to 1, and all the way to 0. It's difficult to see much difference, but if I zoom in, you can see that this has got more of a smooth edge and a roundness to it than this one. But it is fairly difficult to see. But if you're noticing that your brush isn't smooth, let's say we've got topology rake turned on, and it's not coming out particularly smooth, you could use the auto smooth to give it a bit more smoothness. Basically, it's just adding a bit of the smooth brush in to your strokes. It can be very helpful in something like your crease brush. So let's do some creases down here. So that's what it's like without it. Let's turn the auto smooth up. And that's what it's like with it. So you can see the difference. It's a very hard edge there, but a smoother edge here. And I tend to, when I'm using the crease brush, so if I'm digging in here, for example, this is with smooth turned on, but usually I have smooth turned off and let's say I want to refine this edge like this, I will have to then smooth it and then go over it again and smooth it and go over it again. But with the auto smooth, you don't really need to do that. But I kind of like to have the control for myself rather than putting it on the brush. So let's go back to draw and let's start a new file and get rid of that sculpting. So back onto my tools, turn Dyn Topo on, and I'm going to go to constant detail this time and put the resolution up to about 40. See what that looks like, that's great. There's some more options under here. Accumulate is quite a good one. If you tick on that and you brush, and let's say I brush around here and then go back over the top of this, you can see it sort of accumulates and builds up. Without that turned on, if I brush, I'm still brushing and it's not pulling out anymore. But with accumulate turned on, it adds to it and keeps going and going, as you can see over there. I won't go through the rest of those because I don't think they're important for beginners at the moment. Texture I talk about in other tutorials and I'll put a link in the description now. But stroke and fall off I do want to talk about because I think they're important for beginners. So I've started with a fresh new cube for showing you the stroke methods, which are just under this menu here. The default is space with a 10% spacing. So if I draw now, that's the default. If we increase the spacing, let's say to 50, you can see the spacing is kind of the distance between it changing the topology. So you can increase the spacing and have further spacing apart. You can actually lower it from 10% as well, and that will probably cause lag, but it should create a smoother stroke. I'll put this back to 10. Other options we have, dots and drag dot are fairly obvious, so I won't go through those. Airbrush as well you can play with. Anchored is another interesting one, so I'll show you that. So if I go to a space, you click and pull out, and it creates shapes like this. And this is very good for texturing. So using things like texture masks, which I do have another tutorial about. Another stroke method that's very useful is the line. And if I go to a blank spot and just draw a line, it quite simply draws a line. This can be very useful for drawing sort of straight crevices in something like wood and so on. It's also quite useful for hard surface modeling. So if I draw a line or a crevice down here, and then I go to something like the pinch tool and use my line along the pinch, although I forgot to set it for this brush. That's one thing worth noting that when you change your brushes, it won't keep the same stroke method. So I have to obviously select line for the pinch brush as well, and then draw a line down the edge there. And that will then harden up that edge, as you can see. Also, this would be a good time to talk about the Dyn Topo and relative detail. So if I go to relative detail and bring the brush size down a lot and put it on subdivide edges, so it doesn't collapse any of my topology. 
So with the draw brush selected, I'm still on line, remember? So I'll draw a line down here, get my pinch brush again, that's still got line as well, and subdivide edges does a really nice job of pinching your topology together, as you can see. So using the pinch with line and the relative detail with subdivide edges rather than subdivide collapse is a really good technique for hard surface modeling. Now the last one of the stroke methods is the curve, and I've reset my ball to show you this one. You can click on new curve and then control right click, control right click and drag to sort of make bezier handles. And then once you're happy, press enter and it draws your curve, which is a bit of a mess in this case. And you can keep pressing enter to create your weird curves, which in this case don't look particularly effective, but it is a useful tool, especially with hard surfaces if you want an exact curve and a good one for something like the crease or the pinch tool if you want to follow a precise line. Lastly, let's talk about the fall off, and I've started with a new ball. Now you have to imagine that you're looking at a brush from the side. So this is the top of the brush, and kind of the point of the brush, and this is the edge of the brush falling off, hence fall off. It used to be called curve in 2.79. So if we use the draw brush on this, you can see that if I go round to the side here, it should mimic this curve, as you can see there. So if I change the curve to something like a point like this, and draw a line, it again mimics the curve you can see here down the side. These three are the most commonly used. So the default there, the pointy one, especially for things like hard creases and things, and the one at the end here, which is no fall off at all. So if I draw now, it creates a very sort of blocky look. If I zoom out a bit and draw, and you can see that looks a bit weird and strange at the moment. I'm going to undo that. And this is a time I could do with turning up my spacing. So let's go to the stroke put the spacing at five rather than 10, and now draw, you can see it's a clearer cut. Still not great, but hopefully you get the idea of what this brush is doing. If I go to the side here, it should be roughly very flat at the top and then straight down. Most people will use this curve with a slight fall off. So if I click anywhere on my line, I can create points, and you can get rid of these points by crossing them out like this. So if I click on them and cross them out like so. So if I create a point here, and then do a slight fall off at the end, quite rapid fall off by pulling this down. It looks like I've got an extra point there, so I'll just delete that one, pull that one down. You can see this swift fall off. So if I now draw with this, it's a little bit more uniform than the other ones. So you can see that being quite useful in some cases, particularly if you've got something like anchor and a fall off like this, you can create sort of uh, rivets and things like that especially if you're using the textured brushes, which again, is in another tutorial. So those are the major settings that I think are important to beginners. The main thing is to experiment with these. Do make sure you check out my other tutorials, which go into more advanced features of these settings. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.